Hi, I'm Brian Neary, a commercial real estate advisor with Newmark Grubb Knife Frank. With us today, we have co-founder of Technically Media, Chris Wink. We've always tried to approach our editorial coverage of startup communities um, in a way of being honest. So we will absolutely cover very young companies in, in a celebratory way. Just, hey, this person's starting something, we want more people to start things. That is an editorial bias we have. We do want people to launch things. So we think pre-idea, pre-launch, even early launch, you should get kid gloves because the point is just, yes, we want people to try things. Uh, but we talk a lot internally as, as, as your company grows, um, we ought to. The best thing we can do for you is to be challenging. Ask how is staff growth growing? You know, what does revenue look like? Um, hey, we heard you had some layoffs. Um, hey, we heard you might close. We try to approach them in a productive way. When we do those stories, um, which we do regularly, you know, this, this company is closed. Um, we challenge our reporters to say, that doesn't mean they failed. I think that's what a lot of news media still get wrong. They mix up closing a business with failing. Um, you can, every business is an experiment. So whether that experiment works or not, the scientific method, why are scientists so good at understanding just because my trials don't work out doesn't mean that I'm a failure. Why haven't we figured that out in entrepreneurship? So we try to approach our coverage in that way. That's where we think we have journalism DNA in our covering young companies. It's okay if someone closes. We just want to learn from it, as long as you're learning from it. The people we're hardest on are the people who we think are not being upfront. Whenever we found someone who's lying or, or evading the truth, we go very hard. And I think that's one lesson as a rule for any entrepreneur that be honest with the press because they love nothing more than finding a liar and, and they're bloodthirsty. Um, so uh, just be honest and you'll do yourself a justice. And, and that's what we found. We found the smart, serious entrepreneurs who have failed are like, yep didn't work. It's really hard. I had to lay a bunch of people off. That is really devastating for me. I'm really struggling right now, but I think I learned some things. Those are important moments. When you look at, at a Philadelphia technology and entrepreneurship community, it, it's a lot like the conversations that are happening in most other mid to large sized cities in the country. Um, Philadelphia is actually among the largest, as we know, is one of the you know, five largest cities. So we actually are blessed with some heft um, that other mid-sized metros would love to have. Um, I, whenever we talk about the success or failures of, of startup and entrepreneurship conversations, um, we get really muddled in, in comparisons. So often when I'm interviewing someone about something like that, I'll say, you can't say the word Silicon Valley and you can't say the word New York. Those are not things we're going to talk about. That's not productive. Um, they're outliers in every sense of the word. Uh, they don't fit in. Um, and when you take those two cities out of the conversation, um, it changes what your median and mean are, it changes what you think success looks like, and you can start having a much more realistic conversation. Um, Philadelphia as a test case has deep poverty issues, it has educational challenges, it has tax structure that, that still is heavily oriented toward, toward wages over, over properties. There's lots of fundamental basics and, and, and specifics that we know Philadelphia struggles with. But we also know we've seen an uptick in corporations post-recession. We're on a generational decline nationwide, so that, that's nothing that's, that's fresh here. Um, Philadelphia still doesn't have breakout winners. We produce a lot of sole proprietorships. And any entrepreneurship conversation is not celebrating what has already come. It is cheerleading what needs to be. And, and that's what the Philadelphia conversation must be. Be. We need to talk about what's working because we need more people to be a part of it. Philadelphia lost something like 400,000 jobs from, from the 1950s and 1980s in post-industrialization. Um, that they kind of we've probably seen 40 to 50,000 jobs in the region um, in, in tech created in the last 25 years. It's a huge disparity. Um, technology is again nothing more than a tool. So. We need people who are talking about economic change, and it can come in lots of forms. Um, no one should tell you that the Philadelphia startup community is going to solve all of Philadelphia's problems, but it's hard for me to believe that you're going to solve Philadelphia's problems without the startup community being a part of it.